It's almost unfair. You start dieting, your face slims down, your arms look leaner, but that stubborn belly fat just sits there, mocking you. Why? The truth is, abdominal fat isn't just energy storage. It's an organ-like tissue deeply connected to hormones like cortisol and insulin. It's a survival mechanism designed by evolution to protect vital organs. Scientists explain that belly fat is metabolically less active than other fat types, meaning it doesn't burn as quickly. Your body sees it as a reserve for emergencies. So before your abs even think about showing, your body wants to make sure it's not starving. This evolutionary protection makes losing belly fat a game of patience and strategy. And it's why most people quit too early, right before their bodies are about to switch to fat burning mode. But don't worry, in this video, you'll see exactly when that switch happens and how to reach it faster. When you first start a diet, your body doesn't immediately think, oh, time to burn fat. It actually panics. It's used to a steady flow of energy from your usual meals. Suddenly cutting calories is like pulling the rug from under it. In the first few days, your brain detects an energy shortage and signals your liver to release stored glucose glycogen to keep you running. You might feel lighter or more energetic for a bit, but it's not fat loss yet. This phase is all about adaptation. Your metabolism is testing whether this energy crisis is temporary or serious. Only after several consistent days of reduced intake does your body begin preparing for a deeper shift. So if you've ever started a diet and thought, nothing's happening, you're not wrong. Something is happening, but it's just the warm-up. Think of glycogen as your body's backup battery. Stored sugar ready to power your muscles and brain when food isn't coming in. During the first few days of dieting, your body heavily relies on glycogen. Here's the twist. For every gram of glycogen, your body stores about 3 grams of water. So when glycogen levels drop, water weight drops too. That's why the scale moves fast in the beginning, but again, it's not fat loss. Once glycogen runs low, your insulin levels begin to fall, which finally gives your body the green light to start tapping into stored fat. But this doesn't happen overnight. It usually takes around three to five days of consistent calorie deficit. So yes, those first few pounds, mostly water. But they're the sign that your body is about to enter the fat-burning phase. That first week can feel magical. The numbers go down, your clothes fit better, and you feel like a dieting genius. But if you think that early weight loss means fat loss, you're setting yourself up for frustration. As glycogen depletes and water leaves the body, you may see two to four kilograms gone, but that's just your body adjusting to lower carb intake and less stored water. It's temporary. Many people give up when, after a week or two, the weight plateaus. They assume the diet stopped working. In reality, that's when the real fat burning is about to begin. Your body is stabilizing, recalibrating its energy systems. So the early drop on the scale isn't a victory. It's an invitation to keep going. Because what comes next is when the real transformation actually starts. By the second week of dieting, your body begins to sense a pattern. Energy intake has consistently dropped and that triggers a powerful defense system called metabolic adaptation. Your metabolism slows down slightly, your hunger hormones rise, and your body becomes more efficient at using energy. It's nature's way of protecting you from starvation, a mechanism that once saved our ancestors during famines. But here's the irony. While it sounds like bad news, it's actually a sign your body is adjusting to a new normal. You're getting closer to the moment when fat becomes your main energy source. The key here isn't to fight your metabolism, it's to work with it. And in the next section, we'll uncover how your hormones start to change everything. Before we move on, I want to hear from you. When you start a diet, which week do you usually feel your body fight back the hardest? Drop your answer in the comments below. Your experience might help someone stay consistent during that tough phase. Hormones are the invisible conductors of your body's energy orchestra. When you diet, their delicate balance can either accelerate or completely stall fat burning. Insulin, for instance, is the hormone responsible for storing energy, 
and when it's constantly elevated due to frequent snacking or excess sugar intake, your body simply won't unlock fat stores. It's like keeping your energy vault locked. During a calorie deficit, insulin levels drop gradually, finally signaling to your cells that it's time to burn stored fat for fuel. This transition, however, doesn't happen until the body feels confident that the deficit is consistent and safe. Cortisol, the stress hormone, adds another layer of complexity. When you're under chronic stress, lack of sleep, intense workouts, or anxiety about dieting, cortisol levels spike. High cortisol not only encourages your body to hold on to fat, especially around the abdomen, but it can also make you crave more sugar and carbs, fueling the cycle of resistance. In other words, your mindset and stress levels can be just as influential as your calorie count. To truly start burning fat, your hormones must be in harmony. Insulin low enough to release fat, cortisol controlled to avoid storage, and leptin, your satiety hormone, stable enough to prevent overeating. It's a biochemical dance, and only when all the partners move in sync does the magic of fat loss truly begin. So if you've ever wondered why your friend's diet works and yours doesn't, remember, it's not just about the calories. It's about the chemistry running your entire system. After roughly one to two weeks of consistent calorie reduction, your body faces a turning point. Glycogen reserves are nearly gone, insulin levels are lower, and your metabolism has adapted to rely more on fat for energy. This is when the real transformation begins. Your body enters a state often referred to as metabolic flexibility, where it seamlessly shifts from burning glucose to burning fat. The shift doesn't feel dramatic. You won't wake up one day and suddenly feel fat melting. Instead, subtle signs begin to appear. More stable energy levels, fewer sugar cravings, and improved focus. Your liver starts converting stored fat into ketones, a clean and efficient energy source that fuels your brain and muscles. For many people, this is the first time in years their metabolism operates the way nature intended. What's fascinating is how individualized this process is. Some people enter fat-burning mode after four days. Others may need two full weeks depending on genetics, activity level, and diet history. But one truth remains constant. Consistency beats intensity. The body rewards persistence, not panic. If you've made it this far in your diet, congratulations. You're no longer pretending to burn fat. Your body is actually doing it. Not all fat is created equal. And the difference between the two main types, visceral and subcutaneous, changes everything about how and where your body loses fat. Subcutaneous fat is the soft layer beneath your skin, the one you can pinch. It's relatively harmless and easier to lose. Visceral fat, on the other hand, wraps around your internal organs like your liver and intestines. It's metabolically active and dangerous, linked to insulin resistance, heart disease, and inflammation. Here's the surprising part. Visceral fat tends to burn faster than subcutaneous fat. Because it's more metabolically active, your body often targets it first when energy becomes scarce. That's why some people notice health improvements, better blood sugar, lower cholesterol, before seeing major changes in the mirror. The visible fat, especially around the lower belly, is usually the last to go. This explains why the belly fat we obsess over is so stubborn. What we see on the outside is mostly subcutaneous fat sitting on top of the visceral layer. To access it, your body must go through the deeper, more dangerous fat first. It's frustratingly slow, but it's also a sign that your metabolism is doing exactly what it should, prioritizing survival before aesthetics. So next time you feel impatient, remember, your body is saving your life before sculpting your abs. Exercise is often misunderstood in the fat loss equation. Many people think of it as a way to burn off calories, but its true power lies in how it changes your metabolism. Strength training, for example, builds muscle. And muscle tissue demands more energy even at rest. This increases your resting metabolic rate, meaning you burn more calories even while sleeping. High-intensity interval training, or HIT also triggers what scientists call the afterburn effect, your body continues to consume oxygen and burn fat for hours after the workout ends. But even moderate activities like walking, cycling, or yoga play a crucial role, especially in managing stress and controlling cortisol. 
The secret is combining consistency with variety, a mix of strength, cardio, and recovery that keeps the body guessing. However, relying solely on exercise without proper nutrition is like trying to empty a bathtub while the faucet is still running. Diet dictates whether you're in a deficit, and exercise refines how efficiently that deficit translates into fat loss. Together, they form a powerful synergy, but only if you treat movement as fuel, not punishment. So don't chase exhaustion. Chase adaptation. The goal isn't to do more. It's to make your body better at using what it already has. You can have the perfect diet, the best workout routine, and unwavering discipline. But if you're sleeping poorly and living under constant stress, belly fat will cling to you like armor. During deep sleep, your body releases growth hormone, repairs tissues, and regulates leptin and ghrelin, the hormones that control hunger and fullness. Skimping on rest throws this balance into chaos, making you crave sugary foods and store more fat. Chronic stress amplifies the damage. Elevated cortisol not only blocks fat burning, but also redistributes fat storage toward the abdomen. It's your body's way of protecting vital organs from perceived danger, even if the danger is just a stressful workday. Add caffeine, late-night scrolling, or overtraining to the mix, and you've got a recipe for metabolic disaster. The solution isn't complicated, but requires commitment. Prioritize seven to nine hours of quality sleep, unwind with mindfulness or light stretching, and stop glorifying burnout as discipline. Your belly doesn't need another workout. It needs rest, balance, and peace. Because in the end, the hardest fat to lose isn't on your body, it's in your habits. You've cleaned up your diet, exercised consistently, slept better, and yet your belly fat barely moves. It's not your imagination. This is biology at work. The abdominal region has a lower density of blood vessels and beta-adrenergic receptors, the receptors responsible for triggering fat release. In simple terms, it's harder for your body to reach that fat and mobilize it for energy. Moreover, the belly is often a reflection of long-term hormonal and lifestyle imbalances, years of elevated insulin, high stress, and inconsistent sleep patterns. While your arms and face may respond quickly to weight loss, the belly represents accumulated metabolic resistance. It's where your body stores energy for the worst-case scenario. But here's the twist. Once the hormonal balance improves, insulin drops steadily, cortisol is managed, and muscle mass increases, the body finally begins to pull energy from the midsection. The process feels painfully slow, but when it starts, the visual changes happen fast. The key is consistency through the plateau, because right beyond that frustration lies the real transformation. Remember, your body isn't betraying you, it's protecting you. Fat loss is permission-based, not punishment-based. The phrase, eat less, move more, sounds simple, but biology doesn't play by slogans. A moderate calorie deficit, around 15 to 20 percent below your maintenance, keeps fat loss steady while preserving muscle and metabolic health. Go too low, and your body interprets it as starvation, slowing down thyroid function, decreasing leptin, and increasing cortisol, the perfect storm for fat storage. A smart deficit teaches your body that food is still coming, just less frequently, so it can safely use stored fat without triggering panic mode. Pair that with high protein intake and resistance training, and you'll protect lean mass while accelerating fat metabolism. Extreme diets, on the other hand, often lead to rapid initial weight loss followed by brutal rebounds. The moment normal eating resumes, the body overshoots, storing fat faster than before, a phenomenon known as fat overshooting. It's a survival instinct, not failure. So the goal isn't to starve your body, it's to educate it. Sustainable fat loss is a negotiation, not a war. 
This is the million-dollar question, and the answer, though not glamorous, is deeply human. On average, for someone following a consistent calorie deficit, balanced macronutrients, and regular movement, the body begins burning noticeable belly fat between the third and sixth week of dieting. That's when glycogen stores are consistently low, hormonal balance stabilizes, and metabolic adaptation settles into a new rhythm. For some, especially those with insulin resistance or chronic stress, it may take closer to 8 or even 12 weeks before the body starts targeting the abdomen. But once that shift happens, progress compounds. Fat loss accelerates because your metabolism has learned to use fat efficiently. Science tells us it's not about how fast you start burning fat, but how long you can maintain the state where fat remains your main energy source. The first few weeks test your discipline. The following months test your identity. So yes, the real answer isn't when it starts, but whether you'll still be there when it does. How can you tell if your body has entered fat burning mode? It's not about the number on the scale, it's about how you feel. When your metabolism shifts, your energy stabilizes throughout the day, cravings for sugar decrease, and hunger becomes more predictable rather than desperate. You might even notice your body temperature slightly increase during activity, a sign of thermogenesis in action. Other indicators include smaller but more consistent changes in body composition. Your waistline tightens even if the scale barely moves and your clothes fit differently. Blood sugar levels become more stable, mood improves, and your sleep deepens. These are biological whispers that your body is running on fat fuel. But the most reliable sign is endurance. You can go longer between meals without crashing. That's the hallmark of metabolic flexibility. Your body is no longer begging for quick energy. It's calmly burning what you've stored for years. If you've reached this stage, you've earned it. The process that once felt impossible has now become automatic. And if you want to go even deeper into how your body uses fat before it ever touches muscle, check out this video next. How long could you fast before losing muscle? Science explained. It breaks down exactly how your body protects lean tissue while using fat as its main fuel. Reaching fat burning mode is an achievement, but maintaining it is mastery. The secret lies in turning short-term effort into long-term rhythm. This means not just dieting, but living in a way that supports your metabolism. Consistent sleep, balanced meals, manageable stress, and regular strength training. You can even use strategic refeed days, brief periods of slightly higher carb intake to reset leptin levels and signal your body that food scarcity is over. This prevents metabolic slowdown and helps sustain fat loss over time. Think of it as teaching your metabolism to stay adaptable, not strict. The biggest mistake people make 